This is Steve Brown. I'm here to talk about restaurant recruiting and HR next on the Rec Tech Podcast. Welcome to Rec Tech, the podcast where recruiting and technology intersect. Each month, you'll hear from vendors shaping the recruiting world, along with recruiters who'll tell you how they use technology to hire talent. Now, here's your host, the mad scientist of online recruiting, Chris Russell. That's right. It's time once again for RecTech, the only podcast that helps employers and recruiters connect with more candidates through technology-inspired conversations. Today's show is a recruiter edition. This episode of RecTech is sponsored by the team at Lever, providing a modern take on the applicant tracking system. Lever combines ATS and CRM functionality in a single powerful platform to help you source, nurture, and manage your candidates all in one place. They offer a branded job site, custom sourcing tools, great metrics, email and calendar integration, along with a host of other benefits that your recruiting team will love to use. Best of all, Lever's deceptively simple interface means that hiring managers and applicants will love it too. To find out how Lever can help you both accelerate and humanize hiring, Visit lever.co slash rectech. That's L E V E R dot C O slash rectech. Lever is where ATS meets CRM. All right, let's get on to our guest. Steve Brown is executive director of HR for Cincinnati based La Rosa's, a popular chain of Italian restaurants. And he's also the author of HR on Purpose, a Sherm bestseller that gives a different view on of, uh, how to practice HR and enjoy it. Steve, welcome to Rectech. It's great to have you. Thanks, Chris. I appreciate you having me on. It's awesome. No problem. No problem. So you, uh, so you're a pretty famous guy in HR. Uh, I, I would call you HR famous. Um, <laughs> <laughs> how did you get so? You have uh, lots of followers. Tw- Thirty-nine thousand Twitter followers. Tell us how you got here. I think the big thing, Chris, is just recognizing people. Uh, I really am one of those odd people who loves to be around humans. Uh, and I like to make intentional connections. So I think I, I was connected long before social media was around. Mm-hmm. And so when social media happened, they just gave a bigger platform to start really connecting with others. And uh, I think many people do HR greatly all over the uh, world and in different spaces, such as recruiting, uh, but they don't have people who try to connect them. I'm one of those guys who likes to know you on purpose. Nice. I can tell that the first time I met you a few years ago at uh, some conference, I don't know which one it was, but uh, you're definitely a fun guy to hang around. So appreciate the yeah, thanks. Uh, appreciate the time today. All right. So uh, you work for La Rosa's, which is uh, I guess like a pizza restaurant chain, right, in uh, the Midwest. Um, yeah. How long have you been there? I've been there 11 years, or here. I should say not there. I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've been here 11 years. All right. And uh, give us a sense of the scope of the uh, the operation. How many locations do you have? How many employees do you handle? And I'm curious about your recruiting. Is it centralized or decentralized there? Sure. I handle 14 pizzerias, a bakery, a call center, and a corporate office. Okay. So 17 locations. And in those locations, there's about 1,200 team members. Uh, we range from the majority of our workforce is variable and part-time. Uh, we have a small contingent of full-time people across the enterprise. And uh, that's just the corporate side. As a chain, La Rosa's has 66 restaurants, uh, but the rest are franchised. Okay. And so I have a relationship with franchisees, but nothing from a direct HR or recruiting standpoint. Okay, so you just handle the kind of the, uh, the corporate side of things yeah. as far as recruiting goes? Yeah, the cor- where I come in on the corporate, uh, you would ask centralized or decentralized. It's decentralized. Uh, because uh, it's much more location focused uh, right. people it's, it would be hard for them to come to our office and then send them out uh, we're not really spread around geographically but enough so our restaurants tend to draw from neighborhoods that they are that they serve predominantly you don't have a lot of people traveling a long way to go work for them mm-hmm. uh, so we teach our managers within those locations how to recruit so it's, uh, but we're over the recruiting strategy, the recruiting uh, insight. We're trying to get to some workforce planning to work with their uh, labor numbers because they tend to be more operations driven mm-hmm. when it comes to looking at you know number of staff and things like that. But uh, if a cook quits, like if Chris quits, we, oh we have to fill a hole. <laughs> we're trying to get them to think like, well, do you really? <laughs> <laughs> And, and let's see what that means and if you want to deal with what that means. And so there's a lot of education, um, 
but it's working with our managers at the locations primarily. Gotcha. Okay. Who? Uh, what ATS do you use, Steve? We use an ATS called Exact Tire. They're out of Indianapolis. Okay. Uh, really like them. Uh, they they are evolving to a, another platform called Higher Centric, uh, which is like a 2.0 of Exact Tire. Okay. Uh, but uh, we started out with them. Goodness, I want to say five or six years ago. The thing I liked was. Uh, it got us out of paper, which is, I know, archaic, but we were <laughs> way behind. And then it also allowed us to put in an assessment that was validated that helped us screen and do more pre-screening. So we do the pre-screening here at the corporate office of every application that comes through the ATS. Mm-hmm. And then we put people out to the locations that says, you know, valid or not valid, uh, eligible to consider or archived or, gee, you shouldn't talk to this person. Um, it's really helped us in streamlining our hiring process. And it took, goodness, hours and hours of people's time out of the pizzerias because what would happen is candidates or potential candidates would walk in, want to apply, sit in a booth, fill out an application, and then five minutes later say, are you hiring me? Are you hiring me? Are you hiring me? <laughs> and we, we, just, we weren't hiring well at all. Yeah. Since we put this in, now we have a much more efficient process for what we're looking for. Do you still use uh, paper, um, what do you call it, paper uh, applications at all? I remember I walked into a Wendy's not mm. too long ago, and they had a uh, sort of a mini application on the counter, right? It was a small piece of paper, had just the basics, you know, name, address, phone number, what hours can you work, something like that. I thought it was kind of a yeah, quick no. and dirty way to, to apply and get some leads in the door, right? You still do that kind of stuff? Yeah, I it? think, well, we took them all out and we, we stuck to it. And the reason being, um, if we went back to the mini application, I'd have people that were getting on board that really shouldn't have been considered. Hmm. We're, we're trying to improve our retention through our hiring, not just hire. Uh, historically, restaurants, um, you know, fill holes. Hey, I have two hours on the schedule. I'll hire a person for two hours. Mm-hmm. Instead of going to the people who are there going, hey, Steve, would you like to work two more hours this week and get paid more? So we're trying to expand their horizon as to how to run their operation, not just hire. Um, yeah. Wendy's and, and us, I mean, we're all kind of stuck right now. We can't find people. It's a really tough time to hire. So I think Wendy's and some of the other uh, chains are doing anything to try and reach candidates and shut down that time frame of consideration, uh, which I appreciate, but we just haven't done that yet. Yeah. Talk about that, that challenge, Steve, if you would. Um, I mean, what's the, what's the environment like right now to hire for you know, the retail level here? I mean, I know it's challenging. It seems to only be getting worse, right? It is. I think there's some real pressures, Chris, and some uh, mythical pressures. Uh, the wage pressure thing is has been uh, something in our industry forever. Uh, you know, we are entry level. We are a hospitality oriented company. We don't expect you to be here forever. We know that we will have you for a period of time. Right. When we do get you forever as a career, you've made a career choice, and that's wonderful. And we have incredible tenure compared to a lot of our competitors. But we also know that I want to say. 25 to 30 percent of our workforce will turn over regardless of what we do. Yeah. So that's the nature of just that front end of, hey, I'm 16, I had my first job at a pizzeria type thing. Yep. But the, the other challenge is the, the nature of the workforce has changed, and now people are saying, I want to make McDonald's my career forever or La Rosa's my career forever. And I don't know that we're re- responding as well as an industry yet. We're trying here at La Rosa's to stay ahead of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, somebody can walk, you know, down the street and find 20 people who are hiring. So it's an employee's market right now. Totally, yeah. Um, are, you, are you seeing any of the pressures so, of the, uh, the – there's a whole new push now towards the, uh, you know, the minimum wage. Like Walmart just raised theirs. Tar- Target's raising their minimum wage. Um, are your franchises feeling that, that pain as well? Yes, we are. And I think what, the way we're trying to look at it is um, geographically, because there are some areas that are heavy, heavy retail. We have a store in the Dayton area, and you know, there's no residential. It's constant retail. 
So everybody's fighting for the same people. So that, that forces the wages up. It's not really a minimum wage issue. It's what's the wage going for in order to get you in the door. Right. Um, so yes, but in some of the, and we don't have the mandatory minimum wages like Seattle and some of the bigger places. What I've been reading though is in those places where the wage is very higher, very much higher, like the $15 an hour and stuff like that, that they're still hiring as much because people still want to keep their benefits that they had before mm -hmm. through public services. And I appreciate that. So you're hiring people. You're not paying more. You have more people. It's really tough. It, this, this wage pull is tough. I wish we would come to a point of saying, this is the type of work. Here's the wage range where you can come and thrive and grow in our company. Um, How would you like to do that? And then have them come work for us. All right. So you use exact hire for the ATS. Any other HR t tech tools in your toolbox that you use? Oh, I, the other piece is we uh, use social media uh, from the recruiting side. So we're much more of a Facebook type person. We tried Twitter and some of that. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't reach the people that we're looking for. Uh, and I think it's not that they're not there, but you know, I want to look at other places to reach candidates where they are. We do hire 16 year olds and it's great. They're wonderful people, but they're not on Twitter. <laughs> any success Facebook, with, they're uh, on Snapchat. Sorry, any, suggest any success with Facebook jobs? We have. Uh, we, we've we seen people uh, be more responsive. We have a very loyal client, customer base, I should say. Mm -hmm. And so people talk very highly about our brand. And so since that's a positive environment, we can put positions out there and people go, oh, they're hiring. Um, but a lot of it is still, you know, am I in that part of town? So the problem with Facebook is you can be specific and say, hey, we're hiring in Pleasant Ridge. But if I'm not from Pleasant Ridge and I'm on Facebook, I don't know how much it's really reaching you. Facebook Jobs is free, but do you also advertise on Facebook for some of your jobs? We haven't yet. We've been basically, basically using it through our homepage. Mm -hmm. What other uh, types of uh, tools or sites or methods do you use to uh, identify and source your candidates these days? We're trying to figure that out. Oh. It's a unique situation for us because we've been so successful for so many years by word of mouth. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I have generations of Russells that work here or Browns that work here or Smiths that work here. Seriously, we've had four or five generations of families stay with us. Wow. And, and they'll talk to their friends and go, hey, I've been here for four generations. And so they start bringing in their peers. Uh, even in a tight job market, that has worked for us, especially in the Cincinnati area. Outside of Cincinnati, where we're not as um, entrenched mm -hmm. as a tradition, uh, we're competing with everybody else who's in the hospitality industry. So it's, it's having two different environments to try and recruit for or source for. Um, so we're trying to shift from that heavy networking word of mouth piece to say, okay, uh, where can we go with mobile? How can we get in front of people and put it in their hands? Uh, there's several companies I've been talking to that say this is what they can do. And the capability I'm amazed by mm -hmm. What I haven't seen and what I'd like to see is not just testimonials, but, hey, I'm reaching people here because. And we see that by people applying or coming on board or being considered. Uh, I think it's our next step. I think we're probably going to take more of a step that way in 2018 because we need to get in front of candidates where they are versus to them just having to come to us. Yeah. Um you mentioned the mobile solutions. Are you talking anything? Any, anybody like uh, like ShiftGig or some of those hourly kind of out marketplaces that are cropping up these days? No, the one that uh, the, some of the people who've been talking to us and trying to leverage things like Career Arc uh, has has been talking to us, and uh, one of the other pieces we're going to do because we we don't tend to be very traditional here. <laughs> <laughs> um, I want to try and develop a culture page instead of a career page. I want to talk more about the environment and the heart of what La Rosa's is. So we're talking to some people that this is the type of work that they do, uh, NAS uh, here locally, and a few other places that say, hey, we can make your uh, La Rosa's experience come to life so people see themselves in it. Mm -hmm. And that's in a way to attract them, attract them much more on the emotional side. Uh, and then they can come see the environment and see if it fits for them. Nice. Okay. What's your, uh, what's your best source of hire right now, Steve? Uh, it's still word of mouth, yeah. uh, which is really odd. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
uh, here in 2018, I'll be honest, it, it seems like it's Amish. It's just so different um, because it's hard to explain. Um, when people here, when we do market research, Chris, mm-hmm. we'll pull people into a focus room and say, hey, tell us about La Rosa's. And people go, oh, man, I love you guys. <laughs> and that's their first comment. Like, so why do you love us? Well, you know, I had my prom here, and we had my dad's funeral here, and we, we did a baptism here, and it's all of these family things. And it is really palpable. You can feel it. And when people have that, they tell, you need to work here because this is my experience here. Um, that's been to our advantage. So we're going to still ride that for a while. Nice. Do you have um, like a referral program in-house? We do. And uh, we have referral programs for uh, all types of positions. Some positions are higher. Sorry. Some positions are harder to fill. Drivers, servers, mm-hmm. you know, people that want to work in the daytime. Weekend and nights, which you would think would be almost impossible to fill, are great to fill. Because, you know, like the kids are out of school, so they have time to work. Yeah. Um, people want to work on the weekend so they can supplement their regular job, I should say, or their full-time job. We have tons of people that have multiple jobs themselves. Uh, again, a good challenge from an HR and recruiting standpoint. Um, when you're trying to find that G 20 hour, 30 hour, 40 hour person, you can't look that way. I have to hire hybrids. And if I get you for two days a week for four hours each time, that's a good hire. Yeah. So right. it's you- a much different mindset. Are any of your franchises hooked up with something like Uber Eats? I just tried it for the first time uh, uh, last week, and uh, just an Uber driver stopped at the restaurant I wanted and picked up my food. It's pretty cool. Yes, yeah, I think uh, the the whole issue of convenience and stuff is really coming up. Uh, we we know there are restaurant chains here in the Cincinnati area who are doing Uber Eats. Mm-hmm. Uh, mixed reviews. Some are having great. I think it depends on the driver, just like anything else. Yeah. You know, I have delivery drivers that are awesome and others that just do a job. Um, I think it would true, be true with the Uber side of things, the gig part of, of delivery. But we're trying to react and move ahead from a convenience standpoint as a brand because we know that your time is important. And we're even seeing that time is more important than price. Because if I can save you on time and access and efficiency, you'll do that. It's going to change how we hire yeah. in the future as well. Definitely. By the way, you mentioned social media before, Steve. Do you have a, a dedicated person doing that? Yes, interestingly enough. We have a unique thing. Uh, that I don't know any other restaurant chain does this. You know, if you're in your hometown, you call your local pizzeria and say, hey, I want a pepperoni, da-da-da-da. Yeah. Here, you call one number. So every order, online, mobile, phone comes to a central place and uh, we have a dedicated staff of three people that that what they do is watch social media all day and they respond to our guests and talk to people and field things and compliment them on their compliments to us and yeah it's very vibrant it's it's a really we did this starting probably four or five years ago and it's been a great communication tool because we're, we view it as a communication platform. Sure. Uh, and if we can get the message out of, hey, it's not just promote, 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 it's interact. Uh, we'll do the promotions in between. Um, but it's more, you know, how can we engage you as a customer to have you stay with us? You have lots of location. How many do you say? 60 something? Uh, across the whole chain, we have 66. 66. Okay. So um, how, do you, how do you work with them to ensure a consistent you know, recruiting, interviewing, onboarding process across those locations? Great question. We're doing something a little different than others. Uh, we did the old-fashioned training, sit down in a room. This is how you interview. This is how you don't interview. Here's what you say. Here's what's illegal. Never works. So we have from our ATS a great structured interview that fits the – application and the assessment that people went through to apply. And so my HR team sits down with our managers in a booth and we show them how to interview. And then we let them interview and we watch. And then we learn together and then we let them on their own. We find that the ones that are, we see it through the retention. So if they're hiring better because we took time to develop them, not just tell them, they kill it. 
what we found by mistake, just to be honest, uh, we sent out the structured interview and people were reading it and having very, very poor success in, re- in hiring people and making decisions. And they were making decisions around it and not using it at all. So we went out and said, try this. And we read the same form, but they heard it from an HR's voice. And they went, we can say that? I'm like, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and it's reading the same questions, but it's just, you know, hearing it in a different tone, uh, different approach, more excitement, you know, passion about getting you people here. And then they saw it. And I said, would you hire this person? They go, yes. They weren't getting the same responses from the candidate um, because a lot of questions were very much around, are you available? Uh, how many hours can you work? Are you honest? Right. Well, the answer is, I'll work forever. I'll do whatever day. And yes, I'm <laughs> honest. Oh, you're hired. Yeah. Well, we were saying, no, no, watch. This is how the tool works. I think in a lot of times in our industry and a lot of industries, HR pushes out tools or recruiting pushes out tools, but we don't teach the people who are the end users yeah. how to utilize them to their fullest. So true. So automation is creeping its way into retail and restaurants across the country, Steve. How do you feel about, mm-hmm. about that at La Rosa's? And do you think you'll ever start, you know, outsourcing or, uh, you know, uh, I remember walking to uh, the Atlanta airport, got to get my food and it was, uh, wasn't a cashier there. There was a kiosk. So is that yeah. coming? <laughs> yes, I think it is. Uh, to, to what extent and when and how fast, I don't know. With the, the some of the strategic work we're doing this year in – repositioning ourselves from a convenience standpoint, it absolutely will reformat. It it will have to because uh, I was at a place too, it was a pop-up store during the holidays Mm -hmm. and it was, hey, uh, here's your purchase. Uh, Go fill out this iPad, touch it with your phone, let's go. Uh, I'll give you a good example. One of the things we're thinking about, we haven't been there yet, is where the Russell family would call ahead to a dine-in restaurant and they would uh, have their order already placed. You come in, you sit down, your food's ready. Oh, that's awesome. I'm and saying and no, if we you know get to that point, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. So on the same note, it would be also awesome if I could basically just push a button and have the check or pay it right there, you know, instead of waiting for the waitress. Yeah, well, to yeah. So what we're see- thinking or what we're envisioning, and we're seeing this in other chains, this is not unique to us. Uh, you can have that dining experience, have paid say thank you and come in, still have that personal environment, eat and leave, and yeah. you've already paid. So when, the, when those things come across, it will reshape uh, the skill set that we need of the team members who are here, because you still need team members. Yeah. But it will also reshape uh, who we recruit, how we recruit, the number of people that we recruit. Um, I don't know that automation will replace people, but it will repurpose them. Tell us about the book, Steve. You, uh, it's called... Um HR on purpose. HR on purpose. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Um, so when did you write it? Uh, it's a Sherman Bell Sailor now. Tell us more about it. I wrote it over the last year, and it came out in June uh, at the Sherman Annual Conference. Okay. Uh, it's been doing uh, amazingly well. I was, I'm was i humbled by it, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, and the only thing, Chris, is that it takes HR and kind of uh, deconstructs it and makes it what it really is about the relationships and human interactions you have every day with people. Mm -hmm. It's more observational than it is theoretical. Uh, It's got a lot of stories. I'm a story guy. And uh, then it allows you to take and say, gosh, if this is how he did it, how could I do that where I'm at? It's just like the structured interview thing I said, you know, there are tons of HR resources, blogs, materials, books, presentations, conferences, but no one sits down and says, hey, Chris, and this has more of a personal touch. Hey, look, can you find yourself in this? Then you make it work for you. Uh, Because people have it within them. They just need to have somebody kind of encourage them. And, And I think the other thing that makes it different than a lot of information out there is that it's positive. I'm that guy. I'm not negative person. You know, I love HR. I'm like crazy, stupid, passionate about it. And I think it comes across. Got a few more questions for you, Steve. What's, uh, what's, what's your favorite story from the book? Tell us one. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the favorite story was probably from uh, when I first started in HR because I started at Procter & Gamble. Great company. 
phenomenal company, not a fit for me because it was very structured and layered and regimented. And I didn't know that. I was young, you know. I just wanted a job. And I was working at a Fortune 100 company. Oh, my gosh. Um, But I was a fish out of water. So I went to work for an entrepreneur. And the first day I was there, he sat me down at a table and he said, hey, I need you to memorize the names of everybody who works for my company and what they do. And you have 30 days to do it. And if you miss one, when we sit down in 30 days, I'll fire you. <laughs> and I said, great. Uh, now, this was before computers, honestly. Yeah. And uh, the internet and everything was paper and personnel files and a big credenza that was, you know, three feet deep of people. We had 225 people at the time. And, you know, most people can remember five. <laughs> So I studied them, I went to our sites, and got to know the people, and the 30th day, we sat down, and he said, okay, you ready? I said, sure. So he says, you know, who's Ken Medita? I said, well, Ken's the CFO, he came from the East Coast, he's my boss, Uh, he doesn't quite fit us because we're Midwesterners, but gee, it's kind of fun. He goes, yeah. He says, no, who's Ron Schlemmer? Well, Ron Schlemmer is the plant manager, and you hired him out of the Cincinnati uh, Industrial Design Program, and he, you saw a lot of him, and you want to base your company on him in the future, and he's an exciting guy. Yeah, he says, so he gave me like three or four, you know, just easy ones that I should know. Yeah. And then he goes, okay, well, who's Carl Newton? And I said, oh, Carl operates a press break on second shift, which is a huge machine that bends metal. Uh, it has tons of pressure. It's dangerous as anything. And Carl is this wiry little guy who works on second shift in a corner by himself and no one sees him. And he goes, yeah, that's right. And I said, did you know that at night, Carl catches mice in the plant and puts them in the press break and kills them? <laughs> and he goes, no, that's creepy. I go, I know. <laughs> <laughs> and so we sat there uh, for an hour and a half and he just grilled me person after person after person after person and I didn't forget one of them. Hmm. And he says, now do you know why we did this? And I said, no, because you know it was a task and you told me to do it. And he says, now you need to remember this. If you're not here for my people, I don't need you. He says, because my company is my people. Nice. Yeah, so this was in the late 80s. He was way ahead of all the stuff that people actively promote now um but when he told me that that kind of set me on the course to say hey this is how i want to do hr from now on good story steve a couple more questions for us wrap this up i certainly appreciate the time today steve um any uh particular pieces of technology that's caught your eye in the last year that uh, you're looking forward to seeing in the recruiting space I'm right. I'm trying to look at more pieces that are personalizing things, Chris. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think people are looking for a personalized experience almost everywhere. So if there are ways that we can get in front of potential candidates or my existing staff, you know, how do I make their experience more personalized in what they do in working for us, regardless of the role they have? So um, I'm looking at some messaging technology and some ways to connect people Uh, I've seen all kinds of different platforms, but I need to make it very accessible within their hands. And I think it's hard to keep up with it because we still think corporately as technology is a box that sits on your desk, when really it's it's a rectangle that sits in your hand. (laughs) (laughs) So so if I can find uh, communication pieces that are clear, that are um, ways to connect people, to get good messages out to people... Uh, to keep them more informed and engage them more intentionally, I think it'll help us even improve our culture even more. Nice. So I'm, w- I'm watching. I'm looking to see what's out there. Yep. All right. What uh, conferences are you going to this year? Where will we find you? I, I will be at the Sherman Annual Conference. Uh, you know, part of the gig, I get to present there, and I'm also on the Sherman board, so I want to make sure I'm there. Yep. Uh, but then I'm also going Let's to... Let's see, where this year, Chicago? It's in Chicago, okay. um, but I'm, I'm fortunate. I'm going to go to three state conferences. I'm going to Louisiana Sherm in New Orleans in April. I'm going to Wisconsin Sherm in October in Wisconsin Dells and in Illinois Sherm in, goodness, September. To, and they're just outside of Chicago mm-hmm. as well. And then Indiana Sherm in Indianapolis. 
not that I'm trying to stick in the Midwest, but they asked first. <laughs> uh, and uh, I'm also going to go out to uh, Minneapolis and speak at a local ch- mega chapter um, as well in April. All right. So I'll look for him there, listeners. All right, Steve, last question. Best thing on the menu at La Rosa's? <laughs> oh, that's a tough one. Uh <laughs> I, we have a big menu. Uh, my fi- my favorite thing though is uh, we have a Roma focaccia pizza, and it is focaccia cheese and capicola ham and sausage. It's got a bite to it, um, but we have probably the best wheat crust I've ever had. Really, uh, a lot of people have a multi grain or it sort of tastes weedy. Ours is amazing. Uh, and it just makes it that much better, you know, a little less flour. It's nice. I love I love our wheat crust. Nice. Well, I'll have to check it out. I've only been to Cincinnati once, and when I was there, I remember having a Skyline Chili. It was my favorite. Oh, perfect, uh, yeah. I'll have to stop by the Roses at some point. All right, well, Steve Brown, uh, thank you very much for joining me. The book is called HR on Purpose. Where can people connect with you and tell them where to get the book? Uh, you can find the book on Amazon. Uh, just put in the search bar HR on purpose. Uh, it has two exclamation points after it because My two. that's who I am. <laughs> uh, but the, uh, uh, the probably the two best places to find me, Chris would be on LinkedIn and I love connecting with people. So if you like to connect, I would love to connect with people who are in our space and also Twitter. I'm at at S Brown HR and Brown has an E after Brown. All right. We'll link to you in the show notes. Steve, thanks very much. Thanks, Chris. That will do for this edition of the RecTech Podcast. Thanks again to our sponsor. Remember to check out lever.co slash RecTech for your ETS needs. You can subscribe to the show on iTunes, Google Play, SoundCloud, and Stitcher Radio. Hey, if you like the show, please leave a review on your channel of choice. I'd love to see your feedback or mention us on social media with the hashtag RecTech. On the next show, we'll be speaking with the executive, with executive recruiter and author Jeff Hyman. Follow me on Twitter at Chris Russell or visit rectechmedia.com. You can find the audio links for this show on our blog. Just a reminder, I'm a consultant that helps both HR tech firms and employers get more clients or candidates. Thanks for listening, everyone. <laughs>